Hello, hi, I'm Abdul Ahmed. And I'm Sarah Sexton. And we're here to talk to you about Unity, uh, the Unity game engine. Game development with Unity for the Mac. Yes. Uh, so uh, we're going to cover two main topics. We're going to give an introduction about, um, about Unity in general. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what changed since we launched Visual Studio for Mac. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, we talked about that. So uh, game engines, what are game engines? Uh, yeah, if you've been living under a rock for the last, I don't know, six years or so, then yeah. what are game <laughs> engines? Do you want to tackle that? Sure. Uh, so game engines are a set of high-level APIs that helps game developers with uh, graphics manipulation, um, with audio input management, uh, with uh, just anything a game developer would need. It's just a high-level APIs that uh, would um, so instead of for a developer to go down into the hardware level and program all of that, uh, these are things are extrapolated uh, for, uh, for ease of development. Yes. Um, and with the Unity game engine specifically, it gets coupled with a bunch of uh, visual uh, editing tools that helps non-programmers kind of manipulate games and levels and objects within the game without programming anything. Yes, Unity is a really fun sandbox to play in for programmers and artists alike. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite hobbies, actually, to just go in and play with that. Um, and it comes with a really powerful uh, C-sharp tool where you can program things with Visual Studio and Visual Studio for Mac in C Sharp and then have the Unity game engine consume that and uh, and you can play with it. Yeah, uh, the partnership yeah. between Microsoft and Unity has been a very fruitful one. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, so let's uh, go into a demo right about away. how Unity works. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, have Abdullah show you guys what we have in store. Sure. So here's Unity. Um, we're using the 2D um, uh, micro game, which is a learning tool that Unity includes within the installations of Unity. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend it to use that and, and to, to learn how to use yep. Unity. Right out of the box. Exactly. So um, if we look at here, um, let's, let's just run the game right away uh, mm -hmm. and let's see how it looks like. Mm -hmm. So you can move left and right and kind of jump around and that's kind of how the game is set up. Did uh, you have to wire any of this up before we started this? No, this game, this is just a demo. Uh, I, I installed the demo and I opened it up and, and that's what I got. All the functionality was already wired up. Exactly. Okay. Um, so uh, if you look at uh, the scene uh, window as well as the hierarchy window, here is um, what, uh, here is all the game objects that are included in this scene. You can think about a scene kind of like a, a game level if you're familiar with games. And, um, and every scene has a bunch of game objects in there. And mm -hmm. the game objects are the most primitive uh, unit within the Unity game engine. Everything yes. is a game engine. Yes. Uh, everything is a game object. Yes, a game object, sorry. Yes. Um, and, uh, and then um, if you press on any of these game objects, they get highlighted mm -hmm. within the whole scene. Um, so let's uh, double click on the player uh, player here. And here in the inspector on the right, you can see all the different components that we added to this game object. Yes. By default, the game object is transparent. It doesn't collide with anything. It's just empty. All it has is transform uh, component, which tells the game engine where it lives in 3D space. So when you were running the demo, if you just kept on running to the right, you would run through the walls because you were not colliding with the walls yes, yet. Yes, yes, that is true. Um, so uh, with, this, uh, 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 with this game object here, we can see that there's a player controller script uh, that's already pre-written. There's a sprite renderer. That's how we can see the sprites. Mm -hmm. There's an animator to animate that sprite, as well as a rigid body, and that tells, um, uh, the Unity game engine and the physics engine within Unity on how this object should interact with other objects um, mm -hmm. that have other rigid bodies. Uh, yeah, I've done a lot of game jams and I have to say it's really nice that there's already an animator hooked up because uh, you can spend a lot of time just trying to get your main sprite character to face left and face right and have That's an right. idle animation and a running animation. All that's already done for you here. Yeah, exactly. It's a nice feature. And uh, yeah, so that kind of um, how uh, you manipulate kind of game objects uh, within the scene. 
And if you look to the left here, if you look actually to the uh, to the main hierarchy, you can see a main camera. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, just like movies and within a scene, there needs to be a camera, just the camera that's taking images right now. And a camera <laughs> is also a game object. Exactly. And uh, everything that the game camera is capturing is what the player will be seeing later on. Yes. And this is, if you go to the left here and see that uh, game window, mm -hmm. this is what the camera within the scene is rendering. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, depending on what platform you're on, like if you're on a phone screen, mm -hmm. you want your aspect ratio to look like a phone, right? Exactly. Or if yes. you're on a Nintendo Switch, you want it to be laid out in a more landscape mode. Can I say a fun fact about if you're doing sure. uh, virtual reality or augmented reality yes, in Unity? Um, fun fact about that is uh, you see here that your, your, your camera's background color is sort of this light blue. It's a solid color. Mm -hmm. What we do, for example, at Microsoft when we're making HoloLens games, we set the background color to black because holograms are rendered in light. Mm -hmm. And so black is the absence of light. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking through your game camera, uh, you're seeing the first person view and black is rendered as transparent and everything else shows up like in the first person view of you looking through your HoloLens or your mixed reality headset. Interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah, I learned something new today. Um, so yeah, and then, so let's familiarize ourselves more with, with the UI here. If you look down here at the project window, here's pretty much just a file structure. This is what the files look like in your, um, in Finder, um, if, if you look at it. You can press on any of these actually, right click and reveal in Finder, you can see your file structure mm -hmm. in Finder. And do you know if you move the slider back and forth, you can sort of change these from yes. this to thumbnails to files? Yes, exactly. Like this is very useful if you have a lot of images, uh, yes. just to see the images right away. Yes. Uh, but sometimes if uh, I like to put it that way, yeah. just so I can see a lot more yes. on, on my screen. So yeah, it's just for preference. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Um, so let's add a component and let's see how that looks like. Um, you can add component either through Unity directly, um, or create a uh, uh, create one through Unity directly, or you can create one through Visual Studio, which I'll show you how to do that. So let's create a script um, in under gameplay here. Right click, add add a new mono behavior. So mono behaviors are uh, what. Uh, uh, is what we inherit in each script that Unity is going to be using. Mm -hmm. um, so let's create a new one. It just pops right up there into Visual Studio for Yeah, Mac. and it structures it the way that it needs. It's, it starts adding the Unity game engine uh, up there. And let's rename it to test script. And uh, if we look right here, Visual Studio is actually telling us to rename it, so we can just click that right away. Look we'll, at that. Yeah. Um, so the Unity game engine has a bunch of uh, different messages that they send to uh, to these scripts, um, and mm -hmm. they call them messages. And uh, you can add uh, handlers for those different messages. So you can right click and go to implement. Unity messages. And here you can see all the list of different messages that Unity can send to your script. Examples of Unity messages. Look yeah. how useful this is. It's very useful. Uh, sometimes I forget and go into doc documentation a lot. Like that's what I used to do a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, but now I can just look at this right away and implement, for example, on enter, uh, on collision enter. So, um, this is called when there is a collider on your component. And I enter another collider, mm -hmm. so uh, there's a collision happening. Mm -hmm. So this function gets called. So that would make our character run into into a wall or a platform. Example. For like example. if we want the character to change its animation to be standing if it's colliding with the floor, mm -hmm. so that's where we change that. Mm -hmm. Or falling animation if it's not colliding with exactly. the floor. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so that's how it works. Uh, but let's create some uh, public variables here. Okay. Let's say public. Uh, float. Is there a way to zoom in easily, by the way? Let's see if I can zoom in into this. Let me scroll up. I can make the text just a little bit yeah, so bigger. Let's do that. Uh, so public float, and let's call this offset. And let's create a public transform. 
t. Now, what's your thought process here? And now I just saved this uh, this uh, this script. Um, let's go add it to to uh, the player uh, character here in Unity. Okay. So as you can see, Unity is working a little bit. It's little it's pretty. Visual Studio sends us in a notification telling, hey, we have added uh, we have edited a script. So uh, do your thing. Refresh Unity. Yeah. So if we go here and say add component, we can see that we can see our script over here. Test um, script. That's the one you just wrote. That's the one I just wrote. And if you saw this down here, you will see that um, our that. Uh, yeah, you can see all the very public variables that we created actually appear in the editor. Then that's really nice. Um, that's a really great feature because it makes things more transparent and gives you a, a, some insight into what the script is actually doing, right? Exactly. And it also allows non programmers to edit the game and play with the game without actually going back into the code. That is so nice. Yeah. And it's sort of like a, not exactly a drag and drop, but a more user friendly way of editing the script without going into the code behind. Exactly. I mean, we are going to drag and drop something right now. So yeah. if I take the player and drag it into the transform yeah. uh, space here, it will un the editor will understand right away that I'm trying to get the transform component within the player game object and put it in there. Now, in, in layman's terms, um, the transform and the player and all of that, that's just describing the the XYZ coordinates exactly. of the player, and we're transforming it, moving it from one spot to another spot? Exactly. The position, the rotation, and the scale of an object is it's what's inside the transform. If you look up here, you will see that that's, these are the, that's the information that's within the transform. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, and if we go to the script right now and edit the, the uh, transform T mm -hmm. over here. In the update method? Yes. So I'll explain what the update method is uh, pretty soon. But if I if I update T right now, it will actually update. Since I dragged and dropped the player transform uh, in the editor, mm -hmm. it will um, uh, it will actually edit that player specifically. So I don't need to instantiate uh, what is T within the script. Unity is handling that. Mm -hmm. um, so the update function within a mono behavior runs once every frame is being rendered on the screen. Mm -hmm. Depending on the game, if, the, if you're running your game at a 60 frame per second, it will run 60 times a second. Yeah. And if you're running at a 30, it will run 30 it's times like per the, second. the loop that happens every tick. Exactly. So um, let's see. So let's try to edit T here uh, within the game engine. Um, let me just restart this really quickly here. So we're trying to code things programmatically in intelligent ways, right? Yes. So uh, here's the transform T. Let's look at the position equals. Uh, since the position is a vector of x, y, and z, mm -hmm. so we're creating a new vector 3. Vector 3 and 3 x, y, and z. Those exactly. are the 3. Exactly. That's the data. Like the direction. Mm -hmm. So um, t dot position, that's the same position we're in, uh, dot x, which is the x coordinate. So the x coordinate. Mm -hmm. And then we're, let's add the offset. Adding an offset. Yeah. And then uh, let's keep the same, um, let's keep the same, uh, uh, y coordinate here. So they're not supposed to move up or down necessarily. Yeah, we're just we're we just want to keep the up and down and just go horizontally. Cool. Oh uh, yeah, we just want to modify the x coordinate. And since we're in a two D game, we don't need to worry about the z axis at all That's or the true. depth. Yes, the the popping out from between you and the camera. That's exactly. a three dimensional problem. Yep. So let's go back to the game, and let's run the game. So before, you had to press the arrow keys to control the character, right? Yes, that is true. And now if we see it, uh, it starts to... I mean, right now we're not changing anything because if you look at the editor here in the specter, we... We haven't changed the offset yet. Yeah, it's the still offset at zero. is still zero. So um, nothing is really changing. But if we press zero dot one, for example, there you go. Well, That's the character moving. Well, he has a moving. mind of his own. Yeah. And this is not the best way for this game to manipulate the character. Um, so it's like a speed run. <laughs> yeah, but you can add like, you know, different numbers, just make it faster and faster. Or you can break your game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so you can do all of these fun things and just play around with this demo to really learn what's going on and and uh, and learn how to script things. And and there's a lot more scripts here too that they're, they're pre-made that you can look into. Um, some of them are for UI, some of them are for the game mechanics, some of them are for the gameplay, some of them are for just managing the whole game as a whole. So go in, play around. Excellent, what a great demo. One of the things also that I want to talk about is how do you build your game? So within Unity, you can actually support all of these platforms. And uh, they're very they're very fun to play with. You can um, you can target Mac, you can target uh, iOS, you can target Android, um, even Xbox and other platforms. And Hololens. Yeah, WebGL WebGL is one of my favorite because I can just build a game right away and send a link to my yes, friends. Yes, it's, it's so handy. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, and it, um, so yeah, so that's kind of how you build uh, your game using Unity. So you can build from a Mac PC to an Android phone, just like right here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, let's see. So, what other what other things should we show to our audience? What about um, that window you were showing me earlier with the cable, the USB C cable? Oh yes. Um, one of the cool things that uh, no, let's talk about the Rosalind analyzer first. I okay. Do that first. Okay. First okay. things first. Yeah. yeah so, um, so we created. Um, Who's we? Well, Visual Studio for Mac has um, uh, has the Roslyn analyzer uh, within it to um, uh, to help with diagnostics and analyze your C sharp code. Um, oh, tell me more. Yeah. So what we did is, or what what's what's included in Visual Studio for Mac right now is um, specific analyzer for Unity. So um, let's look into that. Um, Really close. Let's just look at the code because that's the best way to learn, right? Um, so if you set, for example, if um, game object, which is this game object, and then tag equals equals uh, player, we're comparing tags. We, uh, might, we could show them where that is in the Unity editor. Yes, yes, we'll show that. Um, but here, for example, this is a very expensive operation. Um, but we uh, we know that as um, uh, the Rosalind analyzer knows that, uh, and it will recommend recommend us to use the compare tag function instead of tag. Oh, look at that! Uh, because it's it's a lot more efficient to use. So we can just use that right away. So it suggested a more efficient way. There was a less expensive call. Exactly. In the program. Yeah, and it will really help you make sure that your code is more efficient and uh, running better. Um, so I want to uh, know how how is it smarter than me? How does it know better <laughs> than me? I mean, you're an amazing programmer, oh. so maybe that's uh, oh, that's stop impossible. It. No, but, stop <laughs> it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, you can add tags to different game objects uh, up top here. Um, there's tag, there's untag, there's different oh, tags. Oh yeah, that so you this can is add. what we're talking about with the player tag. Exactly. It's so, like you wouldn't name your floor under the player tag. You only want to save that player tag for your protagonist. Exactly. You can add layers and you add different things. So is the cool it, uh, thing that we did too is that these uh, analyzers are now open source. Yeah. Yes. So now any developer can go pull. Edit the uh, edit the analyzers and even uh, submit them for us, um, and that way uh, the changes uh, any any Unity developer out there can actually benefit from the changes that you make. Well, any Unity developer out there is this special because it's like s specific to Mac though? No, it's not just for Mac. It's Mac and Windows. Uh, so that's what's so cool about it. it um, and uh, any changes um, that you submit there are going to be available for all. Uh, other game developers. It's the power of open source. I know, right? Um, and one of the cool features too that I wanted to show here is actually how do, uh, is attaching the debugger to different processes. So one of the th uh, things that we added was, uh, or Visual Studio for Mac added, was the ability to attach to multiple different. Uh, it will show you multiple different Unity instances that are running. Do you and have you more choose. than one Unity instance running? Yes, I do. I got this one here. And this other one here. Oh, that is that is clever. Yeah, and now within Unity, uh, within Visual Studio, you can choose which instance of uh, of, uh, of Unity to uh, attach your debugger to. Very nice. Yeah, and one of the cool features also that I uh, figured out with Android phones is that you can run your Unity game on your Android phone, and then you can plug it. And it's all just happening right here. And you can see 
the game. Look at that, it just popped right up. Yeah, on your Android phone, just pop up right away. And that way you can debug your Android game. Yeah. Running on your Android specific device, make break uh, breakpoints and look at the debugger and 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 yeah, and fix your game. This is some cross-platform magic happening it's right here. I'm I'm really excited about this feature. Uh, I really love Android. <laughs> I have a, a Google Pixel phone also. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so we added a whole bunch of other features too uh, to, um, uh, to Visual Studio for Mac. For example, we added um, uh, the feature where if you save your script, mm -hmm. then we just send a message directly to Unity so Unity can start uh, consuming that script. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't have to go back to Unity uh, for it to start processing nice. that script. Nice. Um, we also added, uh, so we also made it so that by default, Visual Studio for Mac doesn't compile the whole project. Uh, because we don't need to do that. Unity is handling the build process. So we don't really, Visual Studio doesn't really need to do that, and that sped things up quite a bit. Oh, yes. nice. Mm -hmm. You can disable that behavior if you want from the preferences, but uh, that by default, that's the, uh, that's yeah. the behavior. The faster, the better. Yes. Um, also, the debugger that we have in Visual Studio for Mac now is the same one uh, that's in Visual Studio for Windows. We took that same debugger for Unity, and we moved it, uh, and we ported it completely to uh, to Mac. Mm -hmm. and that was very exciting, and, mm -hmm. and it made it a lot more powerful. Okay. Yeah, we added the shader highlighting too. So if you want to edit some shaders, they're get, gonna get highlighted within Visual Studio for Mac. And we also added uh, pointer support in the debugger. So if you're running on safe code, um, you can um, you can actually debug uh, the unsafe code. Yeah, Ooh. like those like memory locations. I'm not that most expert on that, but um, I, I usually like the safety that C Sharp. I would love it if you could show me a little bit more about shader highlighting, like just a teensy weensy sure. little tease of shader highlighting. So a while back, uh, when you open up a shader file, it'll just show in black and white with no highlighting. So like, but now, like a, so the colorful text is the new part. That's exactly. the, the text highlighting. Yes, it, it makes it a lot more readable, and yeah. and developers can uh, can develop a lot more easier. So this is a new feature. A lot more easier. Didn't used to be there. Yes, and we added that recently. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So yeah, so I like it when things are colorful. I know, I know. It makes it a lot a lot easier. So I think that's that's it for our demo. Um, do you want to see if we have any more questions? Yeah, out there? would now be a good time to head to questions. Sounds uh, good to me. Uh, first of all, thanks for uh, the presentation; it was fantastic. It's great to know that you can also so use Unity to build stuff on a Mac and. Um, wh what I'm not sure about is how many platforms you can target. Like, is there a specific set of platforms that we can run these Unity just open solutions? The build editor. Sure. Let's uh, let's build. Uh, let's open up the build. Uh, yeah. The build settings here. As you can see, uh, it supports PC, Mac, and Linux uh, as a standalone application, um, as well as Android, iOS, um, uh, TVOS, um, and uh, Xbox, PlayStation. And I know Nintendo Switch is supported. Yeah, um, we're missing some from this list. This is a, a stable version of, like a long-term support version of Unity. But if you install a, a much more up-to-date version of Unity, you can see a lot more platforms being supported too. Now, um, um, does this have something to do with when you're installing Unity from like the installer from the very mm -hmm. beginning? There's like a list of boxes you can check of what do you want to have. Exactly. That also uh, is an option for you to install all, like support for all of these platforms from there. Yeah. Um, and uh, so yeah, and uh, there's a lot more people adding support for their platforms every now and then. So uh, it's important to follow Unity's news and see if uh, any new platforms are supported. Yes. Yeah. Great. Uh, we have one question over Twitter, which uh, goes on the Rosen analyzers that you touched earlier on. Uh, the question is, can I create my own Rosen analyzers for Unity now that you've open sourced these analyzers? The answer is absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the point, right? Yeah, exactly. Extend and open source. That's uh, fantastic, right? Um, you showed some assets there for uh, creating games. Uh, I think people would like to know that how to get assets or if they're not good with uh, designing and artwork, oh, yeah. is there a way for us to, you know, common developers that are not really good at designing stuff to yeah. get started and write our, our games without stuff. relying on a designer? Sure, yeah, you can just, uh, the thing, the cool thing about Unity is that they know that while people are learning 
uh, how to make games that they don't usually have access to um, resources, artists, uh, or anything like that. So um, they have created a store. Let me just yeah, try the Unity to pull asset that store. store. It's it's really a very helpful tool. Uh, the asset store is always there for you, and um, this this is different from just when you're like creating a new project in Unity and selecting either a 2D or a 3D game. You mm -hmm. have the option to like have game assets yeah. downloaded, mm -hmm. but if that, those are defaults, if you want something more specific to what you're looking for, you go to the asset store and then mm -hmm. you can search for things here. And you like click the button, do you want it to be free or not? And so yeah. continue browsing. Yeah, I mean, there are scripts to handle uh, UI, to handle um, uh, different controllers. For example, I know that supporting uh, uh, or hot swapping um, uh, different controllers on consoles can be very troublesome and, and, and very expensive to fix by yourself. But there are plugins out there that will handle that for you. There's um, plugins there that help you um, with, I just saw something that's relevant to you actually. I think it's VR chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that might be helpful for HoloLens oh, developers yeah. too. Uh, and there's sometimes you can find just asset kits. For example, if you want to make a fantasy game mm -hmm. and you just want to get started right away, mm -hmm. maybe you'll change that later mm -hmm. uh, once you get more resources. But right now, you just want to get started right away. Yeah, just there some are, placeholders. Yeah, placeholders, anything like that. There is a bunch of different assets here for An abundance of them. Yeah. Yes. And uh, if you're a developer and you are trying to find a way to monetize some of your artwork, or perhaps you're an artist, uh, if you sell your assets in the asset store, that is another way to generate a source of income. Yeah, not just assets. You can you can uh, sell your scripts. And scripts yeah, too. Yeah, just program all of them with a Visual Slater for Mac and then <laughs> put them up there. And yeah. that's how you can make money. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. You can build games. Make money. What else do you want, right? <laughs> uh, one last question, and we're done. Um, are there any plugins that you recommend, or you have some favorites for Unity to you know make game development easier? Sure. Uh, I mean, one of the ones that I really like. If you're still not uh, the most confident in your programming skills, Playmaker is a really good one to uh, to uh, uh, to help you with visual programming. And then you can go into look into the code and see how, how things are, are going and learn more about that. So that's a really good one. Uh, Rewired is another one for uh, controllers, which I really enjoy. Uh, it really helped me a lot when I'm developing games with game controllers and people were hot swapping controllers and, do we and have just time manage to, all of that. Do you have time to, for you to uh, maybe pull up a page about Playmaker? Or, or all right. I think Playmaker is right on the front page. It's that popular, front page it seems. Of the asset store right yeah. now. And that can help you. Uh, you can purchase that and, and play with it. Um, yeah. Another good one that I really like is 2D Camera Pro. I think it's called 2D Camera Pro. Or maybe it's Pro Camera 2D. <laughs> but that um, helped me a lot with, yeah, there you go. Uh, that helped me a lot when I was uh, starting to develop uh, my game. Um, and it, uh, it, it handles things like you know, zooming in when I'm talking to different characters, uh, uh, staying within the boundary of the game, um, and all of, these, uh, all of that heavy lifting that yeah. uh, you, you have to program all of that within your camera. But um, there are people who made those scripts already. So and that one's that. specific to a two-dimensional game? That is specific to a two-dimensional game. But there are so many assets out there. And you can go and check out different ones. Another good one that I like, I like story-driven kind of narrative games. Mm -hmm. And there is a plugin called Fungus. Where yeah, you can, yeah and it's I've heard of source this. Too. Yeah. Uh, so it's free, and you can play with it, and you can make narrative games. So like kind of like um, a visual novel, exactly, sort of? Exactly, yes. Very cool. Yeah, very it's cool. very cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, great job on this, man. Yeah. Very polished. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> there you have it, my friends. Uh, we show you how you can uh, use your .NET skills on a Mac to write games with Unity. Uh, it's fantastic that the ecosystem is so open and you can find uh, plugins, you can find assets so you can get started easily. Uh, before we move on to the next session, which is all about mobile apps with uh, Xamarin.net, uh, we're going to take a quick break, so we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Thank you very much. Stay tuned.